It's Conduit News Radio with Paul Harrell. Folks, I sat down with State Representative Josh Miller yesterday. It was a great interview. Joe's got it queued up. You want to listen to this about his bill to attempt to, you know, transfer folks over uh, to the traditional Medicaid, which is the reason why they're raising your taxes or they're going to try to raise your taxes later today is because of what we're talking about right here. So it's important to know the context here. Listen to this. Here with State Representative Josh Miller. Josh, how you doing? Doing well, Paul. Thanks for having me on. All right, so your bill, House Bill 1929, uh, was actually, uh, well, let's just go ahead and say it. You're pro-Medicaid expansion now. Well, uh, it makes me sick in my stomach a little bit to say that, but uh, but I was willing to say if we're going to have Medicaid expansion, let's do it the most efficient and affordable way possible. Mm. And the insurance, the private insurance model is uh, is not it, and it's... It's killing our state. Yeah, yeah, it's unsustainable. I think it's unsustainable with the work requirements or without, but regardless of of that happening, the bill yesterday in committee failed. Um, And were you surprised by that? Did you think that uh, maybe some of the Democrats, I mean, the Democrats voting against this is is pretty fascinating because, uh, I mean, this is, this should, this should be what they want. I was really surprised that every single Democrat uh, in the House Public Health Committee voted against pure Obamacare Medicaid expansion. I don't know if that means they're really conservative or they just like wasting more of the taxpayers' money. I'm not sure. Yeah, so we were just talking earlier before the interview about Blue Cross Blue Shield and the amount of money that they're making off the taxpayer. Really just the amount of money they're making, period. I don't know if we could point to any other uh, entity that's uh, making as much money as the insurance companies are. There, There's not one. Um, I believe every business in the state of Arkansas, if they knew that they could get a government contract that's worth $2 billion a year, knowing that they're going to make 20% um, of their of their income, they're going to have a 20% profit margin, uh, I believe that all of us would jump on that. And that's exactly what's happening here. And, and when you've got $2 billion being spent a year, that, that equates to $400 million that uh, is being made either as administrative cost or I just call it profit because that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, again, we're talking with State Representative Josh Miller. It's about his bill that uh, that failed in committee that would have taken uh, the, us from the private option model where we're giving insurance companies all this money to a fee for service, a Medicaid expansion that's <clears throat> much cheaper because right now, Josh, you know, we're paying almost $600 a month per person, regardless of whether or not they go to the doctor. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Obviously, it would be cheaper, but the committee wasted no time in getting some DHS officials down at the end of the end of the table uh, to answer uh, the questions of some of the committee. How did you think that process went? Well, uh, you know, I, I needed a gas mask and, uh, you know, firefighting hazmat material because of the amount of uh, feces and smoke and mirrors and everything that was spewed out. Uh, Just basically a bunch of uh, bull crap that was put out by a member of DHS uh, simply because, I guess, maybe who they work for or whatever. I don't know. Maybe they just don't want to do it. Maybe it makes makes no sense. There were several good questions asked by committee members, both that were for the bill and some that voted against the bill. They asked good, legitimate questions, and they got uh, smoke and mirrors for answers. I mean, there was not one question answered by DHS that was just given a very straightforward and simple answer. Uh, And it's bull crap, man. Uh, That's a government agency answering to a legislative committee, and they had an agenda they they and, and and again they just fill the room with smoke mm. yeah it's really sad because uh this is a uh, taxpayer money at this point and uh, matter of fact if you go watch the video i feel like their arguments uh you know they were exposed if you could lo- read between the lines and you can you know listen to what was going on this would save taxpayer money now at one point there was the question of uh, access to care that was brought up like what happens to this expansion population if they transition out of the private insurance model and go to the fee-for-service traditional medicaid and i thought to myself hang on wait a second 
that's the moral low ground because if Medicaid expansion fee for service is good for the most truly needy people in our state, why wouldn't it also be good for the expanded population who are able to work adults, some of who, some of whom choose not to work, right? I mean, why why even ask that question? Uh, because you're you're grasping for a reason to oppose when there's not a legitimate one out there. Uh, that's the only reason I could come up with. Also, you know, and, and I mentioned this yesterday, by doing the private option model for the expansion population, we have created a two-tier class system of Medicaid recipients. Those who are able-bodied, working-age adults, uh, many of whom who are not working, not hitting a lick of a snake at all, um, they, they have better insurance, are able to receive better care and have better access to care than do our most vulnerable, our disabled, our elderly, uh, our medically frail, who are on traditional Medicaid because of the number of, medic, uh, of, of healthcare providers who are not seeing new Medicaid patients anymore. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's not right. I mean, it's, it's like, why, why are we gonna take this, these, these folks and put them out here on a much better plan than what we're going to do for our most vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, and and you know it really it, it it really sucks. And we've got to. I mean, that's a moral aspect of the deal. Uh, the other deal is the mathematics of of the matter. And numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Um, you know, when when you only have to spend eighty percent of your revenue on paying for medical expenses, then you have 20% that you can spend. Uh, and that, that, that 20%, what's that dollar figure come out to? Well, like I said, right now, you figure we're roughly spending $2 billion a year. So 20% of 2 billion is 400 million. Next year, when the state is paying 10% of the cost of this program, if costs don't go up any more than they already are, then we're going to spend $40 million out of state revenue just paying the insurance company's profit margin. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go to take care of one sick person or one person in need of health care. And, and that's just stupid. It's stupid. So Arkansas Works requirement struck down by a judge. Um, what do you think about that news, and what do you think about the the budget? On Friday, enough of you and your colleagues had the courage to vote the appropriation down to get their questions answered. I'm told that there really weren't any public assurances given. It was all done behind closed doors uh, to get the 75 votes that were needed. What do you think about that that whole process and the work requirements being struck down? Well, it does, you know, it. it it's a bad deal that the work requirements were struck down. That was the one, uh, the one little shining glimmer of conservatism uh, in Arkansas Works was the work requirements. Uh, that judge in D.C. obviously sucks and need to be replaced. Uh, but you know, even with the work requirements in place, we're still talking about 270,000 people that we're going to cover. We've had the work requirements in place for however long now. Our numbers are 270 something thousand that we're still covering. Um, and why not do it more efficiently and more affordably when yeah. there's a better plan? Do you think now that the work requirements are struck, the portal on, online is shut down? I mean, if I were Blue Cross Blue Shield, I'd be calling every single person whose health care was, was uh, you know, that was canceled because their insurance policy was canceled. Get them to sign back up. This program could easily balloon back up to three hundred thirty thousand. I, I well, I I believe that in the next few months you're definitely going to see twenty to thirty thousand people be added back to the rolls that we're going to be paying five hundred and seventy something dollars a month for whether they go to the doctor or not. Um, you know, I, th there's no doubt, just like what you said, we've turned this over to the private companies. The private companies are making money. So obviously they're going to rush out here, uh, that they'll spend a million dollars in a heartbeat to make, uh, 20 or 30 million more. Yeah. 
uh, to, to lobby people to spend money to make sure the program never goes away. Or, or no, just to reach out to folks that were on the program. Oh. I mean, you know, send them mailers, call them, do whatever, go track them down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, that's the that, that makes good business sense. Mm-hmm. And they know, hey, we're going to make uh, we're going to make twenty percent on every one that we sign up. Uh, it's the dumbest thing in the world for the state to be doing. You know, you look around the other states. There's thirty something other states that have expanded Medicaid. Uh, you know, why is Arkansas the only one doing it like this? Yeah. Uh, I mean that that's a question mm-hmm. I read. we're not the only we're not our I mean I love Arkansas and I'm proud to be an Arkansan but we are leading the way in how to expand Medicaid stupidly <laughs> you know and 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 <laughs> that's funny he said cuz you know you have Kentucky they expanded Medicaid then they get a Republican governor says he wants to get rid of it but then he ends up compromising and doing work requirements you could still do some form of work requirements with traditional Medicaid because Kentucky didn't decide to give $2 billion to insurance companies. Now, on that point, and we're talking with State Representative Josh Miller, we're kind of backing up a little bit. You talked about the truly needy. Uh, you did have a success getting a bill out of committee today, if I'm not mistaken, that has to do with uh, taking care of those who are on the developmentally disabled waiting list. This has been something you've attempted to do several sessions, and there's finally the political will to take the moral high ground in this instance and say, hey, if we're going to spend money on able to work adults, we need to make sure those who truly can't take care of themselves get ad- adequate care. Tell us about this. Well, uh, you're right. This is my third session to run a bill that uh, eliminates the uh, d- the DD wait list. There's over 3,000 folks, many of whom have been on there for well over a decade. Uh, just some uh, awful, awful, sad situations and they've they've been there waiting for services um and and they've seen us rush out here and and sign up able-bodied working aged adults on free insurance and they're like hey wait i've been on i've been waiting for 10 years to get services and i'm always getting told well we don't have the money well uh we seem to find the money to pay insurance companies so uh, yeah the political climate uh was right you know maybe the lord just worked in the the hearts of of some legislators and anyway was able to get it passed out of uh it passed the house unanimously this time around i guess they figure oh so the full chamber it's out well it's got a it's got a it just cleared the senate public health okay this morning so it'll be voted on on the on the floor by the senate i don't expect it to have any problems now uh and 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 i do consider that to be a huge win because i know there's there's three thousand something families that are over in the next three years going to be receiving services that they that they've been in desperate need of for a long time state representative josh miller i appreciate it and i appreciate you um you know trying to do the fiscally conservative thing at this point which is transition to fee-for-service traditional medicaid and uh, it's just sad that we'd rather uh you know participate in corporate welfare and just keep giving money to insurance companies and you know i think a lot of this and i'll let you respond to this i think a lot of this has to do with an, uh it being towards the end of session you guys are not going to have constitutional power you know after next week unless the governor calls a special session and i just think there's uh there's a lot of people that just don't want to step up and make the hard decisions right now. Um, the writing would be on the wall after the work requirements getting struck down. The writing would be on the wall to save us from budget turmoil and, and do your plan. But that would take a lot of work, um, a lot you know, a, a lot of reform right here at the end that's unplanned. And it just seems like the leadership doesn't have the stomach for it. Well, I think you're right, uh, Paul. I would say, you know, it is sad. I feel... Uh, I feel like a fish out of water running a bill that does uh, straight up Obamacare Medicaid expansion. I've been opposed to that from the word go whenever I first got in the legislature. But at this point, you've got to face reality and say, okay, what, you know, it's obviously not going away unless Congress acts. Uh, what, how can the state do it the most efficient and affordable way possible? Uh, and and so that's the reason I ran it. It would be it would be work. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's a tough deal. It's a it would be a, a, a it would be a attack. A, a, well, I don't know. It, it would be a tough transition. But 
you know, Representative Payton made the point in committee yesterday, the infrastructure's in place. I mean, DHS has already taken care of about a million people on traditional Medicaid. Uh, so adding 270,000 or whatever that, w that, that basically we would have to send Medicaid cards to and say, tear up your Blue Cross card, use this now when you go to the doctor, I don't think it would be something that's going to take uh, 10 years uh -huh. to put in place. And your bill prior to the year, you know, it wouldn't go into effect till next July. So that's, uh, yeah, that's right. And, and I think we gave DHS plenty of time, but you know, I guess the one positive we can take away from it is, uh, we've got the, the conversation started, uh, which, you know, it's, it sucks when that's the only win you can get out of it. But I think enough folks now, and maybe we come back in two years after we've wasted another billion dollars on profit for the insurance companies. And there's only two insurance companies, mm -hmm. uh, both of whom have made large donations to certain constitutional officers' campaigns. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, whether that has anything to do with anything or not. Certainly not. I, I, would, I would be surprised if it did. Uh, but anyhow... You know, it, it's awful, but I mean, that's literally what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to have wasted close to another billion dollars before the next regular session and something can be done about this. But hey, you know, what's a, what's a billion dollars? Yeah, that that's, seems to be the mentality, an, an unfortunate mentality. State Representative Josh Miller, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Paul. It's always a pleasure. All right, this, uh, that was State Representative Josh Miller. You heard him there.